Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to start on the second fin. We're going to do the front page setup, the front page layout for the second fin in the album that we're currently making. This is the Antique Shop scrapbook album. And I have a video playlist that I will link up here in the cards and down below in the description box. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. My stomach is growling. <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that. And uh, down in the description box and in the first comment, first pinned comment, I have all the links to the paper collections, to the printable templates from my Etsy shop. All of that stuff is down there uh, for you to check out and a special Amazon list just for this project. So the video series playlist takes you step by step through making this entire album. So this is what we've got so far. We've got four fins and we did a mass make for the center of the fins and then, whoops, and then we've done the first page setup and then there's the middle and then here is the back of the first fin setup and then we're going to do this page. But before we do this, I want to show you I've caught up on the School Days album, well, a little bit. I've caught up mostly, I think. Because if you recall, we are... Also, there'll be timestamps down below. I, I know I tell you that every time, but I just want to make sure you know there's timestamps. <laughs> so, behind the scenes, I am making a matching album exactly the same way I'm making the Antique Shop album, but I'm using the School Days paper. So... And I'm also only using the foundations, where this Antique Shop album, I'm using the foundations and all of the decorative edges. So what, how many is there? There's the Charming, the Enchanted, and the uh, Graceful. I, swear, I tell you what, you guys, every time I start talking to the camera, my nose runs. Is there something, um, is there something associated with talking and your nose running? <laughs> so annoying. I am so sorry. Uh, I hate that when I have to go to edit because I'm it's just ugh. anyway I forget what I was saying but we're just using the foundations in the school days so here's what I've gotten so far. So I have matted I put the front pocket here and I matted it and I've got my insert. I haven't done any uh, hole reinforcements or anything but I have the insert there, and then here is the two flip pages, and I actually put these on uh, backwards. They were supposed to go the other way, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you want to, if you're going to make this album and you want to try to follow along, I'm not going to uh, tell you every single thing that I did, but I do have a Amazon list where I put the products that I'm using in that Amazon list, I'll link it down below so you can check it out. I'm not sure if the paper collection's in there or not, but, um, okay, so, uh, first thing, I'm using black photo corners in this one. I uh, haven't decided if I'm going to add any metallic anything, but black photo corners. And then the, the, uh, let me scooch it a little bit so you can see. The wax is a different color than what I'm using in the antique shop. This one is more of a red. This was was my favorite for a long time. It's more of a red color. And where the one we're using in the antique shop, you could probably use this one too if you wanted to. But see how it's a little bit, you probably can't see. It's so subtle. This one's a little bit more purple. This one's a little bit more orange, right? So I just happened to have them and this one matches the paper collection better. So that's what I'm using. So I'll add those things to the Amazon list for this, the school days one. So, okay, so the black, I'm still using the black cardstock, right? So there is one of the flips, and then here's the inside. Here's the, I haven't put a, I haven't put a um, insert here yet, but again, this is made the exact same way. As the antique shop, we're just using the foundations, the mini check foundations. That's it uh, when it comes to the templates. And then that flips open. Whoops, I better be careful. I might ruin my book down there. So then we've got the two flips, and then we've got this big pocket here and a tag insert. So let me tell you about this blue here. So the shades of color, see how it kind of looks really nice with the 
with this blue. See, it's kind of this shade here. Again, you're gonna have to do your own test on your shades of color, but I'll show you which one, sorry, I'm talking to the back here. I'll show you which one that is. I'm pretty sure I know which one that is. I am almost certain it's number 12. So number 12 in the shades of color two, again, I've got my back to you, sorry. And I uh, think number two, number two and number 12, or, or is that number 11? Let me check. I wrote it down. I don't know what I did with it. Hang on. Oh, no, nope, not number 12. <laughs> number two and number 11 are the two colors that I picked for this paper collection. But again, run your own index sheets off so that you can match whatever your printer puts out. Because, <laughs> you know, everybody's printer is different. You can also change the way your printer prints. Like you can tell it to print more red, print more blue, print more yellow print less yellow, print, you know what I mean? You can tell it to do a bunch of different things. So whatever your printer does, print out your test sheets and you go from there. But for my printer, one of my printers anyway, number 11 and number two are what I'm using for this album. And I, what I did here too is I did the mini check uh, over top of the blue. So I printed the shades of color 11 and then I printed the mattes over top. And I think it looks pretty good. I think the blue looks pretty good with this paper collection, even though there's like flowers and stuff. So I think it could go either way. And girls like blue too. So if you're making this album for a girl, girls like blue. And if you didn't want all this flower stuff, well, you could put a picture here and nobody would ever know. <laughs> and here. Okay, so that that's that. And then there's the center and then the back side here. Okay, so here's the same page, right? Here's the same thing. So here are the two flaps. I didn't do an insert. Here are the two flaps. And then the centerpiece, I used black and white baker's twine. I did a flower embellishment and a key. I don't know how well that's showing up. Let me see if I can't zoom in. You can't really see the black and white baker's twine, but there it is. Okay. And I'm using the same keys as I am in the antique shop. Okay, so there's that. And then the insert looks like this. So um, I did it the exact same way I did the antique shop. So if you want to make this album, follow along the antique shop uh, videos and you can just swap out what paper you use. It's just that simple. So this opens up like this. And for this one, I used some lined, loose leaf lined paper that you can get in any store because it's kind of like a school theme, right? I'm trying to get my camera to focus. It's like a school theme. And I just added a few sheets of that. So that was fun. And then on the back here, this is, a, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. This is like where you, when you were really little and you would draw a picture and you would write a story. I had some of this in my collection of just random papers. So I matted the back with this. So on the other one, I think the, mat, the back is uh, the background design, but anyway, so I don't know how well you can see that, but it looks pretty cool. It goes with the theme. So that is what I've got caught up so far. And to be honest, you guys, I was prepping for this video and I was trying to prep for this, for this next fin as well for this album. And it's a lot, it's a lot. So again, I'm not going to be able to update you every single video on the School Days album, but I will do the best I can, okay? All right. Now let's get on to this fin. Everything is prepped and ready, and I've got, we're using something out of every single set of templates, the foundations, all the three decorative edges, so we're using all of the templates. If, if you don't have all the templates or you're not using all the templates, the page numbers are the same. So you can just use the foundation. So you can just use the foundations and a decorative edge. You don't have to use all of them if you don't want to. I want to, so I'm going to, this was a highly requested uh, album to use everything in one album. Again, you don't have to. It's just, um, it's just fun to do, but you can always just use the foundations, same page numbers, and it'll be the exact same. Well, you see, with the um, school days, it just works out the exact same way. So it, the page numbers are the same. That's why I designed the system the way it is that way, no matter what. 
I do. You can still make it. You know, you can still make it with whatever you have. As long as you have a Basically Amazing Foundations, you can make any album that I make. It just won't have the decorative edges unless you add one yourself. So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you all of the templates that I've got prepped and ready and then we'll put it all together together. Okay, so out of the Basically Amazing Foundations, I did um, trace out page 54A, which is the matte for the main base page that we are getting ready to work on. So I'd put that on black cardstock and that's pretty simple, no big deal. And then I have out of the foundations, I'm using the Grangy Wood right now in the foundations. So I printed page 13C. So if, if your background design that you're using is a direction, and for me the, the wood background designs have a direction because I like my wood to go a certain way in my albums, but if you don't, if you don't care, you, it's no big deal. So in the grungy wood, basically amazing foundations, you'll have a 13A and a 13C. So this one is, there'll be two separate pages, 13A and 13C. That's because the background will be different uh, on each one. So this one's actually 13C. I got a note there to remind me to do something. This is 13C because I wanted my wood to go a certain way. So I uh, printed it on two white cardstock. I cut all the tabs off of this one. And we're not going to use this one in this video right now, but I'm going to put it in my stash to use it later. And then um, the mat for that, so on the back side, we're going to be matting it with, again, black cardstock. And so that page is 60AC. Oops, I got that upside down. So 60AC is the mat for that. So I just traced it out and cut it out. Super simple. So there's that. So I'm going to put this aside just so I don't get myself confused. And that's all we're going to use out of the foundations. And then, next step, out of the Enchanted Decorative Edge, I printed page 23A, and I did the mirror image. So here's what the page looks like. Oh, by the way, I've inked and taped everything that's supposed to be inked and taped. There's what the page actually looks like. Well... <laughs> except I printed it mirror image so everything was just printed backwards if you don't if you don't have the mirror image no need you don't have to worry about it just print it normal and and flip it over and and do it that way okay I just wanted this page to be my flip so I have the both of these have been cut so on this one with the hump on the bottom I took the two side tabs off or the top and bottom tab off and I left the long tab so we're gonna make a flip and I inked both sides and I put tape on this side here and then on this one I left all the tabs on and I inked it up and I cut I put tape on it all three tabs and then I, I cut it clean across so that's ready to go and then the mats for these I also printed this is page 70A I printed mirror image and um, that way they'll fit on the mirror image print of the, these are both printed on two 80 pound white cardstock. I printed the shades of color first and then I printed uh, the roses background uh, mats on top of that. And I'm not sure, this is shade one I think. Is that shade one? Yeah, that's shade one. So that's shade one from the shades of color too. So that's ready to go, and that's all we're going to use out of the Enchanted. Okay, and out of the basically amazing, charming decorative edge, we are going to use. Whoops, I need to restick some of my some of my templates. Okay, so I printed. Hang on, let me get everything moved out of the way here. I printed page forty-one CD. And since the roses background design is not directional, it's just page 41 CD. I printed this on 80 pound white cardstock with the roses background design. And it looks just like this. 
so there's no extra printing remember we've talked about this uh, many times about how um, you know you don't have to waste ink on the edges and all the little bits and pieces that you cut off I mean you could use this chunk but um, most of the time like this top part here is just wasted so uh, we're not going to use this part in today's video, so I'll cut this away. But this one, I cut out, I scored, folded, and I inked up both sides. So there's that. And then, these are all scraps that we've already used. So these are leftover scraps from another page. And this one was the uh, wood piece. And I forget. So I used, the, I traced the mat. And I'm not, I don't remember how this was, how this went together, but it was an, it was an extra piece. <laughs> so there's the bits left over from that, putting that in my tray. So we're going to be matting it with that. And then for the back side here, this was also a leftover piece from a previous video. And I traced it. This was uh, 88 CD. I traced that onto that cardstock. And this one I'm going to put in my crafty tray, my crafty companion tray. And there's that. So those were both leftover pieces that we used to make the mats. And it's lucky for me that I've already got my prototype so I know where everything's going. But um, if you didn't, you know, a lot of times I mat things after the fact. Like uh, when I have scraps left over, you know, things like this, I wouldn't have matted that probably until I had a bunch of scraps. But since I know where, you know, where everything's going, it's a lot easier. Okay, 18C, out of the graceful decorative edge, I printed 18C, but again, you can print 19C either way, but we're going to use the smaller pocket. We're not using the bigger pocket right now. So, that was a lot of explanation, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, and then this piece here, this one is from the 6x8 pad. So I just traced the mat, which is a 65C. I traced it, and we're going to mat that piece with that. So I'm going to set this piece aside. Okay. And that is what I have ready for now. So let's get to putting this thing together. All right. So first thing, let's pull our album over. And... Let me move these aside. Let's just start with the main. I just need to remember not to mat things yet. Okay, for one thing uh, I do know, like this, this is going to be a flip. I don't have the mat prepared for the back side of this because it was a leftover piece from another page that we haven't done yet. And it's like a center section. So I didn't want to mess with that paper until we um used it on something else so this the inside here doesn't have a mat but here is what we're going to do i'm going to add this piece first the pocket remember these are all um inked up and ready to go i'm going to add the pocket these do not overlap because i'm going to put some tape on there not it's not 100 percent necessary but don't go over the score. Like that. And I'm going to tape it down. Actually, it's so hard to do on camera. It's, it's not so hard to do in real life. <laughs> but when you're recording yourself, man, it's tough. I've got too much. Okay, so we got that, and then I'm going to stick down the two sides. Oops, that is as crooked as crooked can be. Whoopsie. Oh well, it happens. Gonna be able to fix it either. Without, you know, 
undoing it and I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, as long as this fits, I'm not gonna mess with it. Oh, I might have to. Aw, shoot. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something. That's not gonna work. That, that works, that works. Well, I could just go over top. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna just hope, hope that this works. I just, what am I doing? What is happening over here? I just scored it wrong, and then I put it on crooked, so. It's like a double whammy, and it's okay. Let's see how bad it is. Oh, it's not bad. It's okay, though. No big deal. We've got something going over top of this anyway, so no big deal. All right, then we're going to take our black mat, and I'm going to stick it in here. We're going to mat this up. And I'm getting my glue bottle out. Uh, at the time of this recording, I had asked you guys about this in the last video. At the time of this recording, I haven't, I haven't released that video yet, so I don't know your thoughts yet. When you tape the, when you tape the uh, tabs, you don't have to mat the hoe inside, and if you're going to mat the hoe inside, you don't have to tape the tabs. Just FYI, I, I a lot of times do both, not even thinking. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. Before we mat anything, it's going to get on my nerves. It's going to get on my nerves. Okay, so now we're going to go back to, this was page, um, what is this? What page is this? This was page, I didn't write it on here, which I always do and I didn't. 13C, this is, I'm gonna write it right now. <laughs> 13C, and this is going to be here. So this is gonna be keeping that flap shut. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna have it come down a little bit further this way because there's gonna be a insert that's taller and I'm going to, I'm going to mark it. Because what I need to do is I need to find out where my magnets are going to go. Actually. I don't know if I even needed to mark it. I could have probably taped it. Where's my magnets? Here's my magnets. Um, first, I need to see if there's anything over here that is going to grab onto my magnets. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. So I think what I'll do, because I need to put the magnets on this side. Let me tape it down. You know, I change the way I do this stuff all the time. I kind of crack myself up. I really do. <laughs> it's like I come up with a new way every time. It's like a brand new adventure. Do you guys do that to yourselves? I feel like I do. <laughs> oh, you know what I do need to do? No, I think it'd be fine. Well, let me double check something really quick. Hang on. I'm going to flip this up like this. Whoosh. All right, now I am going to mark this side with that. Now I'm going to put it back here. So now I know exactly where everything is. Oh, you know what I should have done? No, I'm fine. I should have waited to mat, but that's okay. No, I'm still fine. I'm fine. All is well. All is right in the world for now. <laughs> okay, does that seem crooked? Could just be my eyes playing tricks on me. I could go that extra mile 
and nope, it's right. It's all good. All right, I don't remember how many magnets I used on my prototype, but I do know it's the the what's going to be here is a little heavy, so I might do four, and that might be too much for you guys. So if that's the case, you can just maybe do two. It's completely up to you though. Completely up to you. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put one there, put one there. I've got my magnet resources linked below. So if you need to get you some magnets, I don't think I'm doing this right. I think, no, it's fine. I know what to do. Okay, so I got that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna add the magnets on this side. Look at there. And I'm going to put blue dots. Okay. So now I'm going to carefully lay this back where it belongs. Press that down. All right, perfect. So I am gonna cover these with some tape really quick. What do I have? I have, I have, what's that? Nope, nope, nope. Let's just use this. This is 3 8 inch. I can't find my, I must have lost it. My um, 1 8 inch, or maybe I used it. That's possible. Did I use it all? Oh, no, there it is. I found it. It's all right. Got that. And then for these, I'm going to use the 1 8 inch because I would rather use this instead. I don't use this for hardly anything. So. Now, let's put some mats on things. Let's mat these up. Oops, let's just do one at a time, shall we? I didn't even make sure this fit. I'm sure it does. I don't trim out very good when I'm in a hurry, especially when I am, um, got too much on my plate which I always do to myself anyways. That's, you know, that's just me. Or probably you guys too. Too much on your plate. Try to do things quickly in a timely fashion. And you end up just being a little haphazard. I, I do that. That's, that's, that's something I do. Yeah, see, I don't have a mat for that yet, but I, but I feel like that's okay. Do you guys feel like it's okay? <laughs> I feel like it's okay. All right. So there's that. All right, let me move this aside for now. And let's work on the two inserts that are going uh, on there. 
people. That's very precarious. Let me. Sh that's on my nerves. I should have fixed that, but it's okay. All right. First thing. This pocket here, 18C from the Graceful, is going to go right there. So I'm going to put this down first. I don't think any of my tape is in the way. Could be. I might have to. that down and then that's a little bit okay I'm just kind of lifting that up because here in a second I'm gonna have to mat that all right I'm gonna take my two sides off I'm not gonna put the tape there because remember I just talked about how you don't need to do both full mat and tape but a lot of times I forget that and do both but you don't need to it's not a necessity Okay, so I'm going to put glue on this first, and then I'm going to remove the tape backing, just so I don't accidentally glue it shut. That was a lot of glue. Let me do these two first. slide this in here and hope for the best. Perfect. Alright, I think too. I think I'm going to go ahead and mat that. it out very well when I trimmed this out. It was really early when I trimmed that out and I couldn't. <laughs> it's like my eyes would not adjust to anything. Okay, so there is that. Okay, so this inserts going inside of here like that. So what we're going to do is I think I'm going to mat the back of this first because we don't, um, we're not doing, we're doing something on top. We're not doing anything to the, to the, um, we're not wrapping anything or anything like that. So we're going to mat the back. And then for the front, I am going to take a key of this and some of the seam binding that we made and I'm going to wrap it around the mat. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it around the mat. I got a bug. I could either use this or, or I could use um, the golden white. Let me cut a piece. I think what I'll do is I'll tape it down on one side. So keep in mind all these things have been inked and everything. And then we'll take it, tape it down on this side.
So that's going to go there like that. And then this is going to go over top. Actually, no. This is going to go on here. And then this is going to go on top. <laughs> so this is one of the... I cut this out of the paper pad. Out of the 6x8. This was one of those flowers. I'm pretty sure there's probably uh, one in the embellishments as, as well. But this is what I did. So I cut this one out and I think it's going to go here. So I'm going to glue this down. I'm being a little generous with the glue because I don't want this to come apart. Maybe a little too generous with the glue. I think I did it like this. I could just bring my silly prototype over here. That would probably be easier, but no. Don't do that. Whatever you do. <laughs> just talking to myself. And my prototype has a pull on here, and I can't decide. Yeah, go ahead and do it. What the heck? I'm going to use the same color. And This took a look right. I'm going to use it. Okay. And then I'm going to glue this down. I don't know how much of that's actually going to stick to the, to the paper, but... I'm going to let that dry. I'm actually going to put my tape dispenser on it. I'm going to move it to the side and let it dry. So this is going to be a photo flip. So let me grab these are the photo mats essentials. These are the photo mats essentials and I printed three pages of these. We're going to use another page in the next insert we're getting ready to make. But I printed three pages of these and these are on 28 pound paper. You can use copy paper, whatever you want. So this is going to be, I need three of them. So this is going to be the photo flip. I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. My favorite paper trimmer. Let's get that off to the side. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim three sides. So I'm going to trim the one side, the bottom, and this side. Then I'm going to split these in half. Sorry about my sniffles, you guys. And I'm going to leave these pieces here to help with the flip part. So I'm going to need three. So I need one more. Okay. So now I'm going to stamp these three pieces with my 4x6 photo mat. Or my 4x6 stamp. This is the Picture Perfect stamp that I did with May May. I have it linked down below. And I'm just going to put 4x6. 
a lot of times when I do flips, I put the four by six down low, but it doesn't matter. You don't even have to put the four by six at all if you don't want to. I just like to do that so that people, when they receive it as a gift or something, they, they know what size photo fits there. If I'm not mistaken, that's how I'm supposed to do it. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna do that far. Let's do it like this. There goes my stomach again. I hope you guys can't hear that. That's <laughs> it's so pitiful. Okay. I didn't cut that one out very good, but that's okay. It does not matter. So I just kind of lined them up where I wanted them. And you could probably do even one more if you wanted to. So I think what I'll do, I'm gonna use my tape runner. just to kind of get these stuck together. Like that. This is just a Scotch ATG tape runner. Uh, I have several. That one was actually my mom's. All right, let me check this now. All right, I've got a glue mass, which is okay. It happens. All right, I'm going to flip this this way, and I'm going to test this out. So, yeah, this top part here I do not need. There's just an extra little bit. Just take that off. You could put photos on the back. You could ink it up, all the stuff. But I'm not going to. All right, okay, I think that'll be good. So, again... I'm going to use my tape runner. You could use glue if you want. Stick this back on here. And then I'm going to glue these two bits down, the two side bits, to a point. Sorry about my sniffles, you guys. I, I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> All right. So while that dries, I'm gonna flip this to the back. I also then have a printed, this is also from the photo mats essentials, I printed a page of the 3 by 4 photo mats onto 28 pound paper and I cut two out and I trimmed off the extra border so they look like this and I stamped them with my 3 by 4 These are going to go on the back here and we're going to have a little bit of a cluster of these in the middle. Now these were cut out from the paper pad again, but again, I think there's some in the die cuts. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if I used them all or what. I don't know, but um, that's the ones I just grabbed quickly. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to attach these photo mats down first. I got, I got called away for a second. I'm not even sure what I was saying, you guys. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to put it on the parts that have that faux photo corner. And I'm going to try to center that. You know, I do have a piece of advice for Fabri-Tac in general, no matter what bottle you're using. If you take your Fabri-Tac, and here is my new bottle that I picked up and filled this up with, if you take your Fabri-Tac and it's open and you're trying to get it to come down, it's gotten thicker and you shake it like this, you're just going to cause it to bubble over. Now, I do it in video. I know I've seen myself. I cringe every time because I get in a hurry. But when you shake it down, 
you're just causing it to create more air in here and then it's going to kind of bubble up over the top if you don't put a lid on it. So I would imagine that the same thing will occur in this one if you shake it down. But if you just let it come down naturally, I think it'll be fine. We'll see. This is, um, this is, I haven't, I've only used this maybe three days now. Three, not three, I haven't, I've had it longer than three days. But, um, and, and three days. I've only used it three times. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense. This is the third time. That's not true, because I used it when I finished up my, my, um, or I updated my School Days album, honestly. I don't know. I haven't used it that much. Let's just keep it there. I haven't used it that much. <laughs> to know I couldn't give you a definite opinion on it just yet. All right, so now I'm going to take this little cluster here. I'm going to put glue in the middle of them, and then I'm just going to try to make it make sense. Make the three make sense. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Just don't get glue on your photo mat because um, you won't be able to put your your photo up under there. So yeah, it's just a sweet little it's just a sweet little um, embellishment where you could put your photos. So two, three by four photos will fit there. And then one more thing on this insert is I have a this was probably a leftover piece, and when I put it in my prototype, I stuck it here like this, and I like it. So this is one of the 3 by 4 cut aparts, and then this is one of the photo mats that I printed onto cardstock. I inked it up, put 3 by 4 on the back, and I'm just sticking it up in here like this. I just kind of liked it. So it goes like this. So, yeah. Isn't that nice? So I didn't embellish this at all, and I didn't put anything on the back of that, but let's stick it onto the page here. So it goes like that. So we've got one more insert to make, and that's the one that goes in the pocket in here. And let me grab the bits and pieces for that. Okay, I have them all clipped together here, I think. So this is a five by seven photo mat from the Photomats Essentials. And, oh, this doesn't, this will, we'll do this last. This is like a last little thing I needed to do in the last one. And then both of these, so, okay, so this is printed onto 80 pound white cardstock. I trimmed it out, I folded it in half, and I inked the inside, and we're going to make this like a little booklet. So both of these pieces are from the six by eight pad. So there's one of the cut apart flower, cut apart pieces, and then this one has ledger on one side, but it has this pretty floral on the back. So I'm gonna use these, I cut these down to five by seven, and I chomped the corners. Oh, I did not cut these very good. I chomped the corners so that they'll fit on the booklet here. And we're going to glue these down. So I'm going to do that now. Does it fit a certain way better, maybe? Because I may have just... No, I, I trimmed it out wrong. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so I'm just gonna use my Fabri-Tac. Also, Fabri-Tac gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that you can move things about and get it right where you want it. I love making these booklets. We make them. We make them in a lot of projects. They're just fun. They are useful. They're, they're pretty. Whoa. And they can hold a lot of photos. So you could, if you wanted to, you could put photo mats on these. Uh, but, yeah, that one I didn't cut out very good at all. But it's okay. It's cut out, it's inked out. Um, we're going to put photo mats on the inside, but we're not going to put photo mats on this side. So, but what I have got prepped is this is one of the labels or the journaling spots from my journal spot set one. So I just went ahead and printed off another sheet and these are on cardstock. So what I'll do is I'll probably cut these out. Where is my journal spots? The ephemera journal spots. I'll put them in my ephemera journal spots keeper. 
<laughs> um, I have these, I have a template for this, you guys, if you want to check it out. And um, I made one on video. I will link that up here and down below. Super easy. But it's a quick little template that you can uh, put together, you know, really quickly and have yourself a nice little ephemera holder. So I was running out of them, so I went ahead and printed another sheet of this one and of this one because we're going to be using that here in a minute. So I just wanted to point that out. So I'll probably cut those off off camera and put them in my ephemera holder. So oh, these were the leftover bits from those sheets. So I cut it down to five by seven. That's that's all that's left over. So I'm gonna put that in my tray here, my crafty tray. And this is gonna be like a like a title, a label, a, a journal spot, if you will. So I'm gonna stick that up there, and then I've got a few embellishments. That looks okay. Isn't that a nice, um, nice shape for a journal spot? I just love it. Is my phone, is my phone, is my camera focused? Okay. So I'm going to use, I have this piece here, which is also one of the cut aparts from this piece, uh, this page here. I think it was right there. So I cut that out and I'm just going to stick this here in this corner, something like this. I don't know, maybe, maybe something like that. So I'm just gonna actually just glue kind of the bottom part. So you could tuck something there if you wanted to. You could write a title. Um, you could stick something underneath there. I just wanted to have something over top of that. I just think it's adorable. So there's that. Then on the inside, I have another page of photo mats. These are printed on 228 pound paper. And I've cut them out. I need to do the four by six. I don't have to, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna glue these down. And then I've got a couple embellishments that I'm gonna put on here. When you're, when you're gluing down paper, you want to make sure that you don't get real thick with your glue and you want to kind of keep it in the areas that it's not going to be very noticeable. So, that's so why I'm just going around the edges. Carver tack is not bad when it comes to seeing through paper, you know, but if you get too heavy handed, I imagine, I imagine it would be. All right, so these are the two embellishments. These were both from the die cut pack. So this one I think I'm gonna stick here. And this one I'm gonna stick over here. Just because they don't really mean anything. They don't, they don't have anything to do with anything. I just wanted to add something. Just be careful not to glue on the photo mat. You don't want uh, you don't want to make the mistake of not being able to get your photo on there. Maybe over here a little bit. Oh, maybe I better put just a little bit over here. There we go. Like I've got strings of fiber tack everywhere. Right, I'm going to let that dry before I close it up because I did ooze out a little bit. Okay, so let me scoot, scoot that aside for a second. So one last thing, just one last thing, and that is this goes up here. These go up here just as a little something. I uh, forget how I did it. Just as a little something, a little spot to journal. So I'm going to take 
put some glue on there like that. And then I'm going to glue the point. This one, this piece here was cut out from the paper pad. From the 6 by 8 paper pad. And I'm just going to go like this. Just that simple. Just something that simple. Just has a big impact, I think. It's just a really good little embellishment. All right. So I'll let that sit for a second. I think it'll be fine. So this piece, so that's fine. That's done. This piece, sorry, plant, goes in this messed up pocket here. <laughs> that's, that's where that goes. And we'll come back to that mat um, at another time. So that is all I have for you guys today. So I just wanted to say, you're going to probably be seeing this the weekend, the week, maybe the Friday before my birthday. My birthday's on Halloween. My birthday this year is on Tuesday and it's going to be my 50th birthday and which sounds crazy to me um you know I never you never really think about age until you I mean you think about age like oh well when I turn 30 or when I turn 40 or when I turn 50 when you're young I mean that just seems like it's just an impossible task you know but once you hit these milestones it's just normal every day with <laughs> just whatever you know so, I'm not bummed. I'm not one of those people that's bummed or anything about hitting 50. I have no problem with it. I am proud of my age. I'm proud of my wrinkles. I'm proud of my fine lines. I'm proud of my little chubby spots here and there due to things that, you know, happen in our lives. <laughs> you know, I, I'm totally okay with where I am in my life. And I'm happy to be here with you guys. I'm happy to be on the YouTube. I'm happy to be in Etsy. I'm happy with my family. I'm happy with my kids. I'm happy with my grandbabies. You know, I just, life is good, you know. So happy birthday to me. Happy 50th birthday to me. And to any of you guys out there that are struggling with you, age turning a certain, certain turning a certain age or whatever, just, you know, just don't be so hard on yourself. You earned this. You have earned your age. So just be proud of yourself, you guys. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.